Hi, I'm Jim Shaw, uh, chairman of the board of Lex Media and also publisher of Lexington's Colonial Times. Uh, I'm here with uh, Jim Malloy, the, the Lexington Town Manager today. Um, well, this is going to be the first of sort of a series of Monday updates with the Town Manager. Uh, we discussed this the other day, and then on the days that uh, from Tuesday to thir I'm sorry, Tuesday to Friday, we'll have some uh, daily updates from members of the Board of Selectmen starting tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, with the um, with the chairman of the board, Doug Lucente. So uh, with that, uh, Jim, I want to welcome you and I want to thank you for taking the time to talk with us. This, this is really just sort of an opportunity to give a brief update to the folks in the town of Lexington um, about what's going on from your perspective, um, the importance of sort of, uh, you know, how government is running through all of this and, and, what, and what you're doing as town manager and what the town itself is doing to keep people safe, to keep government operating to, you know, support local and small businesses. So with that, I'm just going to throw it out to you and see, you know, where are we today? I mean, I know that the number in Lexington of COVID cases creeps up a little bit um, every couple of days. So let's just go with that, the co you know, the number of COVID cases and the, more importantly, the self-quarantining that's taking place and how you guys are regulating it and, and, and watching over that. Yeah. So uh, as of today, uh, this morning, our public health department has indicated that we have 25 people who are confirmed cases in Lexington. We have 36 people who are under quarantine and we have 43 people who have come off of quarantine. Good. Yeah. The public health department has a public health nurse and he has been in contact with everybody who's under quarantine or has tested positive um, since the very beginning of this entire incident. Um, since uh, sometime in February. And uh, so he's in daily contact every day. They've traced who they've maybe had contact with and they've made sure people who are, uh, need to be tested or need to be hospitalized or being hospitalized. Mm -hmm. As far as the town goes, we have uh, done, taken a number of steps. Uh, we have um, closed, uh, obviously, all of the schools. I know that you've spoken with the school superintendent, but we've also... Yes closed the library, uh, the community center, all of our town offices had previously been closed to the public and our employees were working. Uh, and then we went to a schedule where our employees were working alternately Monday, Wednesday, Friday, one week, and then Tuesday, Thursday, the following week, and then teams would switch. And we were doing that so that we were able to maintain a safe social distance uh, amongst our employees by spreading them out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when the governor issued the emergency order uh, last week, before he had done that, we had already started having discussions among our senior management team about what we needed to do and what steps we needed to take in order to allow the town to go to a virtual town government, uh, because we, we were thinking that within a week or so we might have to do that. And so it turned out that when the governor last Monday indicated that Tuesday at noon, all non-essential um, businesses had to close, we were pretty well positioned at that point to be able to make that transition in mm -hmm. our offices. Our employees uh, who work in the town office building are all working at home. Our current policy is that uh, one employee per office may come in to do whatever various paperwork that they have to do because we do still have a lot of paperwork we need to um, right. because we're a government and we have a lot of paper and record keeping requirements that we have. So today, as you can see, I'm in my office and mm -hmm. so, uh, today is my day, uh, this afternoon. I will be here until probably seven or eight o'clock tonight. Um, but I'm the only person, I think, on the entire floor, much less just in our office space. Um, Good. I haven't seen anybody else in the building. I did hear somebody a little while ago um, outside walking down the hall. So someone else is in the building. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> we've closed, uh, like I said, the library community center, our uh, not only the town office building is operating like this, but our public service building is, although we have our public works department employees are working still on that alternate because we do have a lot of work that needs to be done outside that they can do on their own and maintain right. safe social distance. Um, our, the, the departments that take care of our buildings, the public uh, facilities department is still working. And obviously police and fire continue to work and uh, the Cary Memorial building and our, uh, Temporary Visitor Center that was there remained closed to the public, mm -hmm. while consistent with the uh, 
governor's order and health guidelines. Um, last week, we closed the golf course, uh, which was uh, deemed not to be essential by the governor. And so we did close it as did almost, well, not almost every golf course in the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. And we uh, anticipate that we'll be on this type of a schedule through the month of April. Uh, the governor's order was extended until M May 4th. And so mm -hmm. that's we anticipate um, coming back to work on a, a normal uh, uh, work schedule unless the governor extends the state of emergency further. Let me ask you there. Yeah. If, if you do come back, when you say normal work schedule, does that mean business as usual? Does that mean you're going to sort of phase it in to some degree, just, you know, keeping a sense of, uh, you know, um, safety going forward? Or what, what is your yeah. thought on that? I, I think that what we would probably do is phase it in where we would have the staff come back in, but remain closed to the public until we were sure the public health emergency had passed. Mm -hmm. uh, we're pretty confident based on, uh, I've, I've been attending a lot of Zoom meetings um, mm -hmm. with a lot of uh, government officials. And uh, it really sounds as though the peak in the Boston Metro area will be sometime in mid to late May. Um, even in New York, where they're already suffering, uh, they feel that the peak isn't going to happen until May. Okay. And the likelihood is, is that this will continue perhaps into the month of June or beyond. And so we are following the governor's emergency order. If he extends it, then we'll extend um, mm -hmm. what we're doing right now. So uh, we've also closed all of the playgrounds. And the parks are still open, but they're closed to group sports, and we can't underscore how important that is. Right. Had continued complaints about um, groups of people in the parks that are either playing soccer or basketball or baseball, and the, mm -hmm. clearly this is, these are activities that should not be going on. And so what we've done is we have now uh, blocked off the basketball hoops. And we are, because people were congregating on the tennis courts, we're now locking, as of today, we're going to be locking all of the tennis courts. And we're checking on the school basketball courts. We're pretty sure those right. are closed off too, but if they haven't, those. Okay. It boggles the mind that people will continue to gather like that. Um, so thank you for staying ahead of that. Yeah, and all you have to really do is look at the NBA players and uh, Major League Baseball players that were getting infected. And... Mm -hmm. It's because, you know, somebody touches a basketball, passes it to another person. Guess what? They're passing that virus on to the next person as well. And right. so we're, uh, we're, we are taking those actions. Uh, right now, we want to leave the parks open so that people can do individual activities there and walk or run and get some exercise. Mm -hmm. We have not uh, done anything as far as the Minuteman bikeway. Uh, that remains open. I know that, that was very, very busy yesterday. I was on the bike, not on it. I happened to be driving over the bike path in the center of town. And it was incredibly busy with small groups of people, families even, um, you know, three, four with children sort of moving together within the six feet recommended yeah. zone. So um, yeah. I, I, I know it's hard and I know people are frustrated and they think being outside with their immediate family is a good thing, but still it's, it's, we, we, you've got to be careful. Yeah. And uh, I know some of the towns around us are considering uh, limiting access to the bikeway, but I just don't know how that would be monitored or patrolled. That would be really tough. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as patrolling the playgrounds and other, I know that the public safety, you know, like the Lexington Police Department, they're still out patrolling. Are they the ones that are going around and if, if they see gatherings, are they sort of disbanding them? Uh, we're not doing that yet. Uh, okay. We've talked about that, but we have not done that yet. Some other communities have started using the police to do that. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult for the police department when you're trying to have uh, community-oriented policing, then right. also the police on a bullhorn saying, get out of the park. Right. It's, it's tough. Mm -hmm. So we're hopeful that people will begin to get the message and will eventually stop going into parks um, or going into parks to play group sports. Going into parks is fine. It's not playing. Mm -hmm. Sports. Um, and I'm running a little bit short, but tonight at the yeah. uh, meeting, we will be having a discussion about what we do as far as the annual town meeting, which was scheduled to start about a week ago okay. and is right now scheduled to start on April 15th. If we do start on April 15th, it will be a virtual town meeting. So we're working on some of the 
details related to that and the board will have a discussion this evening about what, that's how we go forward. Mm -hmm. um, we do have some boards and committees that are continuing to meet because they have statutory deadlines for certain projects can become constructively approved and we want to make sure that the community's interests are protected. And right. they, while they're continuing to have meetings, their meetings are solely being done as virtual meetings on the same format that we're on right now. Uh, the Hartwell compost, I just want to get some of these things out. Sure. The Hartwell compost site um, will be closed on Sundays, but they're open Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, we are suspending a lot of the parking enforcement in the downtown area during this event. Uh, mm -hmm. A regular meeting every morning with the senior management team and our health officials uh, to talk about what's going on, kind of uh, the number of cases that we have in, in the community. Mm -hmm. And we will begin having some discussions about the financial implications of this as far as our upcoming year's budget goes. We may not have a very good um, way to calculate what that impact will be until sometime in the fall. And right. as we may leave our budget as it is for fiscal year 21 and start the year uh, trying to hold down our spending as much as we can and right. then get a better idea of where we're at financially to make a uh -huh. determination about what to do in fiscal year 21. We could always, you know, take um, action at a fall town meeting. Right. And then and under vital services that you were talking about, trash collection on, on the regular schedule? Trash collection was deemed an essential service, uh, mm -hmm. but will be continuing on the regular uh, schedule right now. Great. Well, Jim, I know you have to go. I appreciate your time. We look forward to these weekly updates on Mondays, and we'll work out the details a little later. Uh, good luck. I wish you and your family all the very best. Um, and you. we do appreciate the, the time and dedication that, you, that you're giving here to uh, not only us, but to the the community Lexington. I know you're working long hours every day. You may be at the office there tonight till seven o'clock, but you're also working at home till seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock yes. at night. So, yeah. One of the, one, appreciate it very much, and I hope your family as well too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Jim. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.